So imagine this being a piston coming together and it's kind of hard here, but as soon as you get, they get close together, they're solid. Great, your next step, calculate the force required to push the spring together. Measure the mass of the magnet. Measure the mass of the spring that has to move. Calculate the friction. Write all that down and then we'll continue. Now if I were to fire that off. Yes, now measure how much energy it took to quote fire that off. Write that down and we'll continue. It will go several feet. Yes, now measure that several feet, convert it into meters, measure how long it took that specific mass to travel that specific meters, convert it into seconds, then calculate how much energy it took to move that mass that distance. Write that down and we'll continue. So that's great. It comes together relatively, relatively easy. You just go like this, and once these springs get close together, they just help themselves. And you can make that e easier by adding more magnets on the, on the one end and still have the piston size small. You can also make it a hell of a lot easier by using a less strong spring. If you add more magnets to one end and you push it together, it'll take more energy to pull it apart. But, how do, how do we release it automatically? So if, if I pretend this was a donut magnet, or in this case a screw, or sorry, a nut, yeah, and that goes inside. Now, I'm creating a, an inverse magnetic field when it comes together, still comes together just as easily, but then automatically wants to bounce apart. Why not use a lighter spring? So on the inside here, I'm going to have a magnet that extends into the spring without a hole in it. And on this side, I'll have one with a hole in it. So they will come really close together. They should be here in a week or so. And when they come close together, they'll help to pull together, but then they're instantly going to bounce back. Yes, now measure the temperature of your spring. And then take all your figures, add them and subtract them correctly in the correct directions, and you will find the value is negative. See how that bounces back all on its own? And the other way... It comes together relatively easy but stays, it stay for days. And one little flick, we got over uni, that, that just went like four feet. <laughs> so the mount, my idea is the radial engine, as I told you, concept where it's gonna have like five magnets, to 10 magnets, 15 magnets. And then you need to add a source of energy. And then at the 15 magnet point, it's going to compress and uh, it goes pulls to the 20 magnet point per se. And then it's going to pop off and then start all over again. So I'll have three of these in a rotor. And then you have to add a source of energy. Make my radial engine design. So that's how it, that's how it works. And I'll have these in cylinders and it'll be all looking halfway decent. But yeah, that's the concept, Mike. So it will look nice. It'll just sit there and do nothing without a source of energy also added. But hey, who am I complaining? I'm not paying for it. <laughs>